So here are Fio's flagship all balanced armature in-ear monitors. These are the Fio FA9s um, and we'll be unboxing them here today. What I did here was I already removed the, uh, the plastic wrapping. But here's the box as you can see. It has this very nice kind of rainbow tint to it in certain viewing angles. And what makes this one different is that my previous earphones, these are the Fio FA7s. And this one is basically the predecessor to the FA9s. These ones have a have the quad balanced armatures, so there's four of them. This one sports six and it has the new tuning switches, which I will show you guys in a sec when I unbox them. Okay, but first, all Fio products come with a little scratch thing here so you can see the authenticity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scratch this code and check the authenticity and then I'll be back. Hey guys, I am back. I just verified the code on here and it is authentic. So let's get to unboxing. Okay. So this thing is very thick and heavy. And you can see this is very nicely presented. There is some kind of uh, interesting texture here. Woo! And there are the earphones. Now I did get the, uh, the clear color as you can see, but I will come back to these in a bit. Uh, I want to go over the accessories first and then I will go to the earphones last. But they do look stunning in person. Okay, so here are the accessories. And you can see they give you an assortment of different ear tips. And I really like how Fio does this because uh, every single ear tip slightly changes the sound signature. You're bound to find one that kind of suits your preferences for what kind of sound you want. Okay, wow. This is a really nice carrying case. Uh, compared to the Fio FA7s, which I have here. This is the old carrying case that I was using. As you can see, it's just a clear hard shell plastic case. Now it seems like they went all luxury and went with the Gucci Louis Vuitton leather case. No, I'm just kidding. It's not actually genuine leather. I think it's imitation leather, but it is really nice. And you can see, oh, there's even a pouch inside here with some silica gel. So let's get that out. And they have the same uh, little pouch here that also comes with the FA7s. Uh, but I usually don't use these. I just use this to carry the extra ear tips and cleaning tools and stuff like that in here. And that's the inside of this. And it has a nice soft texture and feel to it. Okay, so all in all, this is a really nice carrying case and definitely one that I will be using. Okay, let's look at these tips. Let's see here. On the whole assortment of tips. And I think what they added here is now they include some kind of spin fit tips. Um, I also have the other one from the FA7s. These are from the FA7s and you can see this one does not include the new spin fit tips. So I'm interested to see what kind of difference uh, the spin fit tips will make. And then over here, we probably just have some documentation, paperwork, things like that, uh, which I won't really open up because I usually don't pay attention to this stuff anyway. And I think that's it for the, uh, the accessories. So 
So I'll put that in there. Oh, I actually want to see what's in here. Okay, so the same thing. This comes with... This is like a uh, magnetic cable type of a uh, tangle thing. So when you want to wrap up your cable cord, you can do that uh, with this. But uh, it also came with the FA7 and I never used it for the FA7. So uh, I probably won't find a use for this, but it is nice to have. And this is a cleaning tool. Let me see if I can get it cleared. Yep, so this is a cleaning tool. And what's different is now because of the tunable switches on the earphones, you will use this side to get in to change the settings on the switches. Okay, so now let's get to the earphones. see here they do include a very nice cable which you can see here so here we have the, the new Vio FA9s and I will get some close-up pictures for you in a little bit but one thing I noticed straight off the bat is that these are a bit thicker than the FA7s. Um, and even though this cord is really nice, it's a uh, silver plated copper cable. What is a little disappointing, I guess, at this price paint, at this price range of around $500 to $600 is even though this is a really nice cable, it still only comes with a, a 3.5 millimeter unbalanced jack. At the, around this price range, especially since it is the flagship IEM, it would be nice of them to include a balanced cable as well as the 3.5 millimeter unbalanced one. Okay, so it has actually been a day since I unboxed the FA9s and that was because I wanted to spend a little bit more time with it before making my first impressions. I will be mainly comparing this to the FA7 because that is the main driver that I've been using for quite some time now and this is supposed to be the successor to the FA7. Just a quick note that all my tests were done using a FIO 2.5mm balanced cable plugged into the Ear Studio ES100. First with fit and comfort, uh, it is definitely bigger and heavier than the FA7. It definitely feels bulkier uh, but it still sits comfortably in my ear once I get it in. The FA7 is lighter and overall a more comfortable pair of IEMs. One thing that I was concerned about with the FA9s um, when I first saw the pictures was since the switches are located in the back, I was concerned that maybe you would feel them when they were in your ear or maybe they would scratch your ear or something like that. But that's not the case. Uh, you don't feel the switches at all. Uh, even when you brush your hand against it, it does feel very flush with the uh, outside surface of the earphones. So there are three switches in total. The first just changes the impedance, uh, which I leave off because I just want a more cleaner sound. The second and the third switches are actually what change the sound. So the second switch changes the treble, the third changes the bass and the mids. By default, it comes with the first switch on, the second switch off, and the third switch on. After trying out the switches in a couple of different ways, I found what I like the most is just having them all off. This is called the uh, bass boost mode, and even in this mode, I found that the bass is still slightly reduced in comparison with the FA7s. So if you like the FA7 sound, uh, having all the switches turned off is what it most closely resembles. If you want more trouble and reduced bass, then you can just turn on the second and the third switch. My comparisons, uh, which I will be going into a little bit more, were done with all the switches off. So I found that the FA9 doesn't sound quite as warm, but 
in replacement, it adds more treble, clarity, it has a wider soundstage, and a much cleaner sound. In my opinion, it is an overall improvement in sound quality in just about every way. With the FA9, I hear a lot of micro details that were harder to pick out on the FA7. What I really found the most noticeable is the wider soundstage and how easy it was to pick out the location of where the sounds are coming from. So for example, I've been listening to a lot of Final Fantasy VII Remake soundtrack, which mostly consists of orchestral sounds. In those soundtracks, I can easily pick out like, okay, there's a, a guitar plucking away all the way to the right, there's a flute playing in the center, but slightly to the left, and there's a piano playing 70 degrees somewhere to the left. That was just an example, but like, that's really how it was like. Uh, that's how clear it was to hear exactly where the sounds were coming from, from the stage. And it's a really interesting sensation compared to any other earphone or headphone that I have previously tried in the past. The FA7 in comparison uh, did a pretty good job with this as well, but I found that the FA9 just took it another step forward. I found myself picking out a lot of new details and songs, uh, songs that I have heard many many times in the past that I didn't pick out with other earphones. That's my overall first impressions. These are my most expensive earphones to date, so I can't really comment on how it compares to other pricier earphones. But being the most expensive I have tried, it is without a doubt the best sounding earphones that I have heard so far. I have also seen some written reviews where some people prefer the FA9 to something more expensive like the SE846. So that's it for this video. It was supposed to be an unboxing and first impressions video, but I did go a little bit more in depth with my first impressions to really try to explain to you guys what it sounds like. Uh, overall, I am very happy with this purchase, and if you like the FA7, then I also recommend the FA9. Uh, it's just a nice improvement across the board. So thanks for watching, and I will be uploading uh, a lot more tech videos soon.